Salutations, Slam Fam. Yours truly, Simon A. And this is a very special video because it's my 200th Mickey Mouse video. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For as long as this YouTube channel has existed, I've been making a lot of videos about my favorite Disney character. I mean, it goes without saying how much I love Mickey Mouse. I have shirts of Mickey. I have hats of Mickey. My phone's case has Mickey and Minnie on it. I have these little <laughs> cute little House of Mouse toys. Should still be on Disney+. Plus. My AirPods case is Mickey themed. I have a Mickey Mouse cup. And of course, who can forget? My beloved little plushies of Mickey and Minnie. The fucking microphones in the way. See? <laughs> yeah, really cute. Oh, yeah, and recently I got the uh, limited edition figurines of Mickey and Minnie to celebrate Disney's 100th anniversary. And of course, I met Mickey Mouse at Disneyland multiple times. And I even got to meet the guy that voices Mickey Mouse. So yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of Mickey Mouse. But I'm not the biggest fan of Mickey Mouse. If you think I'm obsessed with Mickey, you ain't seen shit yet. Because for this special 200th Mickey Mouse video, we're going to be taking a look at probably the biggest Mickey Mouse fan in the world. With the biggest Mickey Mouse collection in the world. Janet Estevez, who holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the biggest Mickey Mouse collection ever. And her story of her obsession with Mickey Mouse is featured in a show called My Crazy Obsession, one of the only shows on TLC that's not about fat people. <laughs> so I'm going to be reacting to Janet's story and providing my own bits of commentary now and every now and then. So... Let's get in on this. Let's do this. Mickey Mouse is one of the most beloved characters of all time. Facts. His likeness is featured all over the world. It's true. Mickey Mouse's likeness is featured all over the world. Like, every time I go to, like, a store or something, Mickey is always there in some shape or form. It's kind of spooky when you think about it i mean it's kind of creepy knowing that mickey mouse is like everywhere of course he has been around for 95 years so to speak and while many eventually outgrow their love of mickey not this guy not 55 year old janet 55 damn he still has a house full of mouse it should still be on disney plus by the way just saying over 5,000, maybe closer to 6,000 people. 5,000? Holy watches, shit. Clocks, snow globes, name it, I have it. Impressive, <laughs> very impressive. Everything I need to learn in life, I learned from Mickey Mouse. He's gentle, he's kind, he's smart. He's That's true. everything you want in a perfect person. You know, I don't really blame her. For learning everything in life from Mickey Mouse. Because, you know, it's true. He is smart. He's kind. He's caring. Sometimes I like to compare Mickey Mouse to, like, uh, Mr. Rogers. I know that that sounds kind of weird and, like, out of nowhere. But just hear me out. They're both very kind. They're both gentle. They're both appealing to children. And uh, they make kids uh, feel good about themselves. Not to mention... Uh, they were both born in 1928. Seriously, seriously, they both share the same birth year. <laughs> not crazy, but I do have an obsession with Mickey Mouse. I have to admit it. It's like that she admits it. That's... Janet Estevez is so obsessed with Mickey Mouse wow. that since 1974, 1974, she, collect, wow. she has not thrown out a single piece of paper that has his wow. image on it. It's taken am... me over 30 years to 30 years collection. she's been collecting before i was even born holy shit that's Janet impressive currently holds the guinness book of world records for most mickey mouse items and since 2007 has broken her own record twice there's i mean technically 
wouldn't she be breaking her record more than twice every time she gets a new piece of Mickey Mouse merch? I mean, there's just no topping her. I mean, I admire her dedication to getting Mickey Mouse stuff. That's pretty fucking impressive. Not such a thing as too many Mickeys in her mind. So the quest for new Mickeys continues to this day. And to keep up that purchasing pace, Janet shops at flea markets, wow. garage sales, and large retail stores for new Mickey items every single day. I need, I need it, I need it, and it's my size. Cute. She can spend up to $200 in one trip just buying mass-produced souvenirs. But it is really the rare, sometimes priceless, must-have items she's searching for on these daily Oh, that's cute. Stores. Minnie's kissing Mickey. $200? Damn. I hope she has a job that like pays her well if she's able to afford a lot of Mickey Mouse stuff. Cuz like I want to collect some Mickey stuff too, but you know, money doesn't grow on trees and they can be pretty damn expensive. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to be responsible with your money, you know. I have to talk to somebody to see if I can get that display. And she will go the to sign? any length to acquire these one-of-a-kind and often not for sale Mickeys. It's just a what fucking stock the image. Displays, the Mickey displays. <laughs> you no, unfortunately we don't give away our signs. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where do you put them? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to find them. I want to find them when you throw them away. You can't so throw away now. now. I am. You know, I've kind of established myself as a piece of shit before, and I do think it's kind of weird that a 55-year-old woman is, like, crying in public because she can't obtain a piece of Mickey Mouse, uh, I guess, item that she can't, she isn't really allowed to purchase. But at the same time, you know, she's very dedicated to Mickey Mouse. So, I, at the same time, I don't really blame her. I understand. But, you know, if it were me, I would just have a good solution for for this. I would just take like a... I, I, would, I could just take like a high quality picture of the display sign. Then go to like Walmart or some shit. And just like uh, have it printed out on like a giant poster board. Cut it to like a, the shape of a circle. And then display it on my wall. And then... Boom! Problem solved. It may not be the real deal, but uh, it's definitely better than nothing. But anyways, I'm getting a bit off topic here. It's a little <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, it's everybody kinda... has their certain obsession, so it just happens to be yours. Yeah, that's true. But acquiring Mickey memorabilia is just the beginning of her obsession. Arr. The average American family visits Disney World only once in their lifetime. Wow. Janet has already been there 200 times, and now visits the Mickey Mouse Theater three times a week, every single week. 200 times? Wow. I don't think even the average Disney adult goes to Disney World that many times. I mean, hell, I've never been to Disney World at all in my life. I've been to Disneyland, though, four times. Once in 2009... Another in 2017, another in 2022, and then last year, of course. And hopefully this year, too, if I'm lucky. I want to make it a yearly thing, but, you know, it is pretty expensive. But that's just part of the magic, I guess. I don't know. I always tell him that someday you have to come and visit my collection, my house. And he always goes, yeah, he goes, call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I think my mom would like to think that Mickey remembers her. Of course, I, I know that Mickey remembers me. Of course. I don't think the characters are allowed to remember you. Mickey makes six appearances daily. <laughs> and when she's there, she tries to see him at every Aww. single one. That's actually really she wholesome. She's so happy. It's like her inner child just glows. That's really adorable. I go to the parks and Minnie is... Oh, look, it's Minnie. I have to say hello to her. You have to. It's okay. But then I say... I need some time alone with him, and she steps out. And I Bro, why you gotta do me like that? She doesn't admit it, but I think she's a little jealous of Minnie. Nikki is my mouse friend, and I'm his girlfriend, but I have a husband. So, you do the math. You did the math. So, basically, she's cheating on her husband 
with a fucking mouse. Because <laughs> <laughs> she refers to herself as Mickey's girlfriend. Even though he already has a girlfriend. I think that's just what separates me from Janet. You know, Janet, she cares about Mickey and Mickey only. Me, I love both Mickey and Minnie equally. I mean, they're, they're the cutest cartoon couple in the world, in my opinion. And, you know, they've been together for 95 years. That is a line you don't cross. You know, considering how upset she is with Mickey and how she literally considers herself to be Mickey's girlfriend, sometimes I wonder if she ever gets, like, any weird sexual feelings about Mickey. Lord knows I don't have any feelings like that. Or do I? Why wouldn't you look at me during? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fucking disturbing. Although, to be fair, if I didn't make that joke, this video would probably get marked for kids. So, you're welcome. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> alright, alright, let's get, let's get back into this. But it was Janet's husband who fanned the flames of her mouse passion. In 1974, Aww. the two got married. And for their honeymoon, Ricky took Janet to Disney World for the very first time. Oh, that's very nice for of him. Janet. It was second love at first sight. Bruh. It was very, very uh, beautiful experience. She <clears throat> like me when we got married. And I promised her that we would be coming to Disney at least once a year. I have since kept my promise. Once a year. After spending thousands on airfare and four to eight days traveling from their home in Puerto Rico for their yearly pilgrimage to Orlando. We have Whoa. to drive to San Juan, take an airplane to Miami, then another plane to Orlando. That's a lot yes, of traveling. It was, it, it, it was a whole day affair. My we parents only have to drive six hours. Promise, but at Janet's insistence, they moved closer to Aww. Stewart, Florida. Little Mickey there. hours from her other true love's home. Damn! It was close enough. I mean, it was it, it was an improvement from <laughs> 1,125 miles. <laughs> but traveling twice a week for four hours to see her mouse was still too much for Janet to bear. Bruh. So they moved again. This time into a condo in Celebration, Florida that puts her just 10 minutes away from the Magic Kingdom. Now I'm only seven miles from Disney World. Look, don't get me wrong. I love going to Disneyland. It's like my favorite theme park in the world. And I would love to go there a lot more often than I normally do. But I don't think I'm going to go to the trouble of like moving all the way to Anaheim just so I can be close to Disneyland. I mean, I would love to. But considering how popular Disneyland is, I, I think it's pretty obvious that houses in Anaheim would be pretty fucking expensive. And I'm not willing to take that kind of financial risk. I, I just can't. <laughs> Janet Estevez has been collecting Mickey Mouse memorabilia for the past 30 years. And her 5,000 piece collection is the largest in the world. She and her husband recently downsized from a 3,000 square foot home to an 1,800 square foot condo in Celebration, Florida. Bruh. So she would only be seven miles from her mouse friend. That's closest just... to heaven as I'm going to get, that's for sure. Although Ricky wow. hired movers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Janet refused to allow them to even touch her Mickey items. So she made several two hour trips to ferry her many boxes of Mickeys to their new home. Wow. I always wanted to live here. That's why we bought this place. But now as she moves in, Janet isn't sure if she can fit the whole collection into her new home or if her husband is going to make her downsize her collection as well. Since we have uh, constrained our collection to a smaller area now, we are having a challenge in finding space for all the Mickey items. I mean, it is over 3,000 pieces. 5,000 actually. mouse had an exact place where it stayed for years without being moved. But now with less space, finding the perfect spot for each piece is no easy task. Oof. Every single no kidding. spot on this wall is taken. Not yet. Not yet. You can still see the wall. In their previous yep. house where she started really displaying her collection, there were some in the living room, but not overly taking over the house. Here, they're just kind of everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I want to make a collection as small as fuck compared but to, to hers. Janet, 
the precise placement of her 5,000 piece collection is anything but haphazard. To her, it is an exacting art, and she can spend an hour just organizing her mice. Have we arranged <laughs> mice? Them? And uh, I look at them, and uh, no, uh, no, and I move I them. I love how she's on a pile of Mickey, talk to them surrounded by Mickey plushies. No, That's kind of cute. You look here. No, you don't look here. She's even wearing the big ass gloves. She talks to them sometimes and uh, blows kisses at them, but I guess that, that's uh, a lot of people do that. Okay, I'll miss. Sometimes I kind of do that with my Mickey plush, but you know, he's kind of like a little friend to me in a way. I mean, sure, maybe just a plush, but like, you know, he always brought me comfort and he makes me feel good. It's like a, a bit of a teddy bear or something, uh, a teddy mouse or whatever. For her larger and most prized pieces, finding the right spot can be a whole day affair. She's got to have like a no, lot of larger like stuff. It. Made more stressful by her husband's stringent Mickey rules. I'm kind of surprised she has a daughter too. Ta da! <laughs> it doesn't fit anywhere else. You're kidding, right? My husband has his own area, but the rest of the house is Mickey House. He wanted to see if it fit here. <laughs> Mickey but House. We have an agreement. That uh, there are no Mickeys in his office. I gotta find a Oh, I respect that. I requested really. that we don't have Mickeys in the bathroom. We don't have Mickeys in our bedroom. We don't have Mickeys in my office. We keep our spaces separate. There is a hidden Mickey inside the office. Aww. He doesn't know it. I have to have a Mickey everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> hidden Mickey, like in the Disney it's movies. It's called a hidden Mickey. I like what she did there. There's that was pretty cool. There's one other Mickey in Janet's house that people don't ever get to see. I do have Aww. a sad Mickey. My husband bought it for me back in 1991 when my parents passed away. Aww. It was a sad period in my life. Aww. It's been for 21 years that my parents passed away. I cry every day. <laughs> That's why I have to keep myself happy with him. So I have a happy Mickey. You know, th that was very nice of him to like, you know, of, of her husband to do that for her after her parents passed away. I guess in a way, Mickey has helped her get to difficult times, like, especially with the loss of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of a parent. I mean, yeah, you can never stop missing the ones you love. But I'm glad that she has something to help her get through such a painful moment in her life. So I guess that's just part of what makes Mickey Mouse so significant to her. Yeah, Mickey's kind of like a comfort character to me, too, sometimes. I mean, whenever I'm feeling sad or something, I just look at Mickey. I sometimes hug him, and he just makes me feel good. And I, was, I mean, yeah, sir, some people say it's weird that, like, I'm an adult and I'm doing this, but... But hey, some people have their own ways of, like, dealing with their feelings. I just happen to use Mickey Mouse as a way of dealing with my feelings. Same thing with Janet. So if you really think that's fucking weird, then you're a piece of shit, and you get no respect from me. With her sad Mickey safely secured in her new home, huh. Janet still has to find places for 4,999 smiling mice. Damn! <laughs> He can be there. It's gonna be pretty hard. But her husband has limited Aww. her choices. We have a we have an unspoken code that Mickey will be uh, constrained to certain areas of the house. There's always been just one the exception code. to Ricky's rules of no Mickey. I'm sorry, but I just have to reference this one scene from an episode of the Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse. The code. <laughs> If you know what I'm talking about, then you, gold star for you. <laughs> no Mickey in his office or their bedroom. For the past 20 years, Janet has slept between Ricky and Mickey on a Mickey pillowcase. I just realized, so did she decide to call her husband Ricky, even though that's not even what... That's not even like the short version of his actual name? Because like... I'm guessing it's because it happens to rhyme with Mickey. Wow. <laughs> That's some dedication, I gotta say. 
And now, having moved into a smaller space, Janet has tried to push the envelope. Ooh. Right. Ta -da. That is a perfect place, I won't lie. Higher. It breaks the code. It breaks the code, I know. I have a better place for it, though. It is a rug, and this is where rugs belong. See, that's smart. It is a doormat. You're kidding me. No way. Nobody's gonna wipe their feet on Mickey. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. I think you should put it there. No, 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 no. We're kind of... We work out where to display the the items sometimes, and and sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. Whatever yeah. makes Janet happy is is fine with me. You know how they say it's happy wife, happy life. Ooh, you know I gotta say I have a lot of respect for Ricky because, uh, you know, I'm sure he. I had to sacrifice some stuff just to keep Janet happy, especially with her big ass collection of Mickey Mouse merch. I mean, that's some dedication as a husband, but uh, sure, happy wife, happy life. But uh, the question is, are you happy as well? Because, you know, I think it's going to be healthy if both people are happy, like the same, regardless of what their interests are, or whatever. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I like Mickey too, and uh, we each have our place in Janet's life. Just that's to see nice. her kind of light up like that, um, that's really nice. It makes her happy, and that's all that matters. That's if wholesome. everybody was like Mickey Mouse, wouldn't it be a better world? For real, that's straight up facts right there. And that was the story of Janet Estevez and her love of Mickey Mouse. I think that was, uh, it got a little weird at some points, but it also got very heartwarming, a bit heartbreaking at one point. But I think this is just a, a wonderful story you know, about someone whose life was really changed because of a little cartoon mouse. And I'm glad that Mickey brought her so much joy in her life, and I hope she's doing well. I think it's okay to have an obsession. It's okay to dedicate your life, or at least part of your life, to something that you're really into. Whether it's Mickey Mouse, or Spongebob, or Power Rangers, or Barney and Friends, or Thomas and Friends, or My Little Pony, or whatever. It's okay to have an obsession, it's okay to have a collection of something. It's okay to be obsessed with something, as long as it doesn't hurt you, it doesn't hurt other people, and especially... If it's legal, I mean, it's, it has to be legal. I mean, if it's not, then uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And, and especially, make sure that you, what you're obsessed with doesn't inconvenience the lives of other people you know. Now, I'm not saying that Ricky's life is inconvenienced, but uh, I'm sure it wasn't always easy because of Janet's obsession. But at the same time, I hope they're both happy. And... In a way, I think they are. They definitely seem to have some kind of a, a healthy marriage, that's for sure. <laughs> and hopefully it's just as healthy as Mickey and Minnie's relationship. <laughs> yeah. I love Mickey, and I love Minnie. Honestly, I don't have a fucking clue what made me so into these mice. My love for the two adorable cartoon mice has stuck with me to this very day. I love Mickey and Minnie Mouse, and I always will. And they continue to bring me so much joy in my life. Yeah. Which reminds me, oh, I forgot to show this. Uh, I just happen to have this picture of uh, Mickey and Minnie from an episode of Mickey Mouse Funhouse. And it just happens to be signed by Caitlin Roverk, who is the current voice of Minnie Mouse. And I, I got this as like a very late uh, Christmas present. And I just love it. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. And I, I also got an Apple Watch for Christmas. And uh, I just had to set it to Mickey Mouse. I mean, see, look. It even talks, too. It says the time. It's 8.31. Yeah. It's super cool. But, uh, yeah. That's the reaction. And I hope you all have enjoyed it. And, uh, TLC, I hope you don't molest me with a copyright strike. Of course, I don't think you will, because this is a reaction, and unlike SS Sniper Wolf, 
I'm adding some useful commentary that's transformative to the video. Anyways, take care, and uh, in the words of Mickey Mouse, see you real soon! <laughs>